Social and economic development is critical for any country. It brings about sustained improvement in the well-being of individuals, groups, families, communities, and society at large. This is why the Zambian government attaches great importance to spreading development to all parts of the country. Over the years, the government has embarked on a series of ambitious developmental projects across the country aimed at transforming the lives of the citizenry. Central Province lies at the heart of Zambia and shares borders with eight of the nine other provinces of the country. During a courtesy call, the Permanent Secretary took time to explain the progressive absorption rate of the constituency development funds. For us, as New Dawn Administration, we believe that um, the Constituency Development Fund is a game changer. And uh, we have 14 constituencies. And these 14 constituencies, as it were, just last year alone, they received over 400 million. 400 million as Constituency Development Fund. You may wish to know that um, in the year of the Lord 2022, His Excellency, the President of this great republic, President Haka in the Hitler, deliberately did reintroduce free education. Now, the reintroduction of free education policy came along with a catalog of problems. Chief among us, those problems were issues to do with crowding in learning environment or in classroom blocks or in classrooms, if you, as it were. And also the need for seating arrangements, which is desks. So you may wish to know that um, among us, the main issues that the Constituency Development Fund is curing is to build infrastructure to answer to the core of free education. We had a number of schools that were not worth called schools. But today, as it stands, I wish to confirm that um, a total amount, okay, a total amount of over 80 million has been spent on desks for both 2022 and 2023 Constituency Development Fund. And this has gone to the procurement of over 60,000 desks. We are trying to answer to the core of having no child sitting on the floor uh, as they go to learn. Kawe District Commissioner Lennox Shimwambwa expanded on some of the CDF projects that the government has implemented in the district. We have had 29 projects that were running for the two constituencies of Kawe Central and Wacha. We're grateful that from 1.6 we moved to 25.7 to 30 point, now 30.6. So it has been very significant and more especially in the aspect of education for all, or free education. How has it impacted? First and foremost, we have had to embark on a directive by the president to ensure that all the kids are on desks by end of 20, that was a directive by end of 2023, but obviously we have had that, uh, an extension to 20, end of 2024. Akawa district um, planned to procure 10,000 desks. We have so far procured 9,500 desks. And I think in terms of um, our target, I think we've done significantly well. Um, I think 90% or 95% of our children now are seated on, uh, on desks. And I think we're very grateful to President Akainde Chilama for ensuring that our children now have an opportunity they didn't have. Secondly, we have also had to construct schools, um, one by three classroom blocks. Uh, one of them that I have in mind is an, an, um, a Natuseko, Natuseko C basic, basic school. Uh, and so it's a one by three, which uh, was completed in 2020, 
at the beginning of 2023. Uh, it's now function one by three classroom in Atuseko of uh, Kawe Central constituency. Um, we have also had um, a maternity annex in Wacha constituency at uh, Wacha Health Facility. Uh, this is a this is a state of the art facility that uh, awaits uh, uh, commissioning. Uh, um, it was just handed over by Minister of Health some two weeks ago. So that is also another significant project we can brag about. We also have a mother's shelter just next to our central hospital, our main central hospital. We have a mother's shelter which has a capacity of 200, uh, uh, accommodation of 200 mothers. Using CDF funding, a maternity annex was constructed at Wacha Clinic. Residents of Wacha constituency expressed their gratitude to government for walking the talk. We really want to appreciate the government for this gesture that has been done at Wacha Health Center uh, for building us this labor ward in this community, Wacha. It's going to benefit the people of Wacha, not only the people of Wacha, but also ne the neighboring communities out there. Challenges in terms of delivery. Let's say, for instance, by some papa, ambulance, you or Mitako take transport money. We got also challenges because about the end of Makunoka Kujen Hospital, Kutari Sana. At least with this facility, Kalafu is having to have in Sana for one of my own safety. Today, total apparently about Baku, the Panapa Water Clinic. Now, I put Sushaba and my own say that Kuakula woke up with Tauka Tauka Tivalo, Kuvalo, never to let never to let it on paper. The Kuri no bomb to a club papa, my and the Banama wants a valet Sakunok clinic. Now, valet a clinic each caramba. This is Edith Mulako, a community volunteer. Edith has worked at the health facility over 27 years. I'm better to retort Hirako take which I call a tinch to a bomb belly. Today, we touch over take which in a chin, a patchy parkureka, Gavena watcher. Pansion says she may catch on a bomb, but for Padimia Cabuchi, oh, Padup, San Padichi, Scrava, Kurile, Kuringana Kumo, Coco to a pantu, Pak to Kurida Coma tenet wing, separate na Nare Bawad, Pantuaka, the Chadi Cham Sevania, Pacuat in a manga, Repa Polonga, Amuleta, Avant one Zavad Pau Piva Lemona. A science laboratory at Moashi Secondary School in Chowa Township was constructed using CDF. Uh, this laboratory will cover three subjects, uh, science subjects, that is uh, biology, chemistry, and agriculture. You know, if you move around in many upgraded secondary school, they don't have laboratories. But for Mwashi, we are very grateful to have uh, this under CDF. Because the benefits from uh, there are great. You know, this time the world is going scientific and uh, Mwashi cannot be left out for our children to, to learn science. Environmental protection is key to achieving social and economic development since citizens depend on the environment in countless ways. Kawe District has been grappling with lead contamination from decades of mining activities in some of the townships. The district has a dump site which are waste of the mine and smelter that has over the years polluted the environment with extremely high levels of lead. In compounds, children continue to get exposed to lead toxins in the soil. However, government with support from cooperating partners has devised interventions to tackle and neutralize extreme levels of lead pollution to ensure the protection of human health and the environment in the affected township. Kawe is one of the towns that are reported to be leading in terms of lead poisoning. And for us, that is not sitting well, that has not sat well. And when we came in uh, together with other cooperating partners, this government cooperated with other stakeholders and brought in Zimrip. You pardon me, I just know it as Zimrip. And 
as such, most of the areas that were hot spots have either been concretized by way of putting concrete or we have planted grass in terms of lawn. You go to, right now, you go to areas like mine area. Most of the areas, people have been capacitated to plant the lawn. And also, not only that, the canal that by and large was ca carrying water from all the way in Makurulu into the mining area, into, uh, if you like, uh, into Mpima stream and straight into Muteteshi river and eventually into the Mulungushi river has now been concretized. We've put concrete on, on, on either sides, both down and on either sides. And that project is ongoing. And what has happened is that that has not just come as a project that has come to cure the lead poisoning. It has come also to empower men and women who have been given subcontracts, all right, to build um, um, that canal as it were and open it to floodings because year in, year out would have floodings that is being precipitated as a result of that canal not being managed. But now that canal is being managed, houses in Chowa, which, is, which was predominantly a mining area, mine, mine township, uh, are not flooding as they were flooding in the previous years. Government is constructing the Chowa Canal as a mitigation measure against lead poisoning. The Kawe District Commissioner bemoaned the speed at which the contractor is constructing the canal. So the World Bank uh, got a contractor. Uh, ourselves, obviously, we are not very happy with what we are seeing. In some cases, even the quality of the works. It's a, it's a $4 million project, by the way. So we, I think it runs a stretch of um, uh, about, tw uh, about maybe 18 or 20 kilometers or something, or thereabout. It's quite a long stretch. So we are not very happy. We have uh, written through provincial administration, through PSC's office. Timothy Banda, a resident of Chowa Township, also expressed his displeasure at the rate at which the construction works are being done at the canal. Area on to say it's a good thing, but the pace at which this is done, I think, is uh, uh, at a very slow pace. Yeah, we were expecting uh, this to finish early, especially this this part where it's very busy for people to, yeah, and when they were doing the and they were removing the, the, the soils that were down there. Yeah, they were carrying them using the, the, the tippers, which were also taking back the lead in the, the compounds because they were not using other routes where people cannot access that red contamination. Yeah, so that, those are the only effects. Otherwise, this is a very good thing if it, if it could finish, you know, in good time. Other residents of Chowa Township are grateful to government for the works being done on the project. We have so if you buy it, you can buy it. You can buy it. You can buy it. You can buy it. So, I have to go to the house. I have to go to the house. I have to go to the house. I have to go to So, I have to go to the house. So, I have to go to the house. I have to go to the house. I have to go so, to let out the paper, you know, it's a part of improvement. But in a change, the other one is too for at least. So, to let out the paper, you know, change, which means the England Valley for Samana Vantu, the new land, the Valley of Samina, the new Bapos, Baku, Bamu, Payamuntu, and Ponso Mumin. So, I know it's a man to take up the table. In agriculture, Central Province has a favorable climate fertile land and vast water resources with great agricultural potential for investment. Agriculture is the main economic activity in the province and the region is home to most of the commercial farmers in Zambia.
Central Province is one of the major producers of all the country's major crops and about 50% of the national produce comes from the region. To mitigate the adverse effects of climate change and further promote integrated agriculture production, the Zambian government, with support from the World Bank, constructed the Momboshi Irrigation Dam in Chisamba district of Central Province. The 1.6 kilometer water mass can hold up to about 65 million cubic liters of water with a capacity to irrigate 6,000 hectares, making it Zambia's largest irrigation dam. You are aware that Momboshi Dam is curing three things. Number one, we're keeping fish there. Number two, we want our farmers, small scale farmers, to irrigate throughout the year. Then small, large scale farmers. We have right now uh, Zambia Correctional Service that is doing a fantastic job there. And they are drawing water from there throughout the year. That is adding to the GDP of this great country. And also our small scale farmers, they are graduating slowly but surely from peasant farmers into middle income earners. And that is the dream of this government. The Momboshi Irrigation Dam has supported over 760 households who have engaged themselves in agricultural activities and the landmark project has also enabled local farmers to form a scheme which has assisted in crop diversification throughout the year. So the dam is uh, supporting officially 760 households. These are in the scheme. Uh, they are supported with uh, lands, they are in tears. They do programs as a community or is it as, as a scheme and also uh, at individual level. So this scheme has actually proved to be very beneficial to, to these uh, farmers in the scheme in that uh, now they are able to grow their, their crops throughout the year and by so doing their income levels have, have improved. So even now we are, we are looking at the sky with the with some uh, sense of uh, yeah, like anxiety because we don't know whether these rains will resume or not. So around Momboshi, what the, the farmers have done is to switch to irrigation. Even as maybe we still remain in the rain season, but because of the uncertainties, they've started uh, irrigating their crops. So that is a huge benefit to the people in Momboshi. Then we are also seeing uh, an increase in hectares for the commercial farmers that are also benefiting from, from that water. The Ministry of Agriculture, through the Irrigation Development Support Program, has been supporting Tier 1 farmers by providing them with implements and imports. The IDSP is a project which has been offering capacity building and technical support to farmers. Our farmers have benefited greatly in the sense that uh, in, in, even in the event where we have uh, dry spells, like currently we have this long dry spell, our farmers have not been affected by that because they are able to irrigate uh, and, and, and are able to do their activities, agricultural activities. So they are, they are benefiting uh, in, in that aspect. And uh, through the project, uh, you, you, you may want to know that uh, uh, government uh, assisted our farmers uh, with uh, three tractors. Uh, in, in Momboshi here uh, to mechanize their, their production. Uh, so that has also gone with uh, their supporting uh, um, tractor drone implements like plows, uh, disc harrows, uh, planters, uh, reapers and they also have um, also tra a trailer that to help them uh, move their, not only their produce but also their inputs uh, to the fields as, as, as they are doing their agricultural activities. So in addition to that, um, government has also assisted our smallholder farmers uh, with uh, uh, drip irrigation uh, kits. That's the whole uh, set of, uh, of, of the drip irrigation kit. And uh, uh, like you noticed in the field, um, they are currently installing uh, those uh, uh, drip irrigation kits uh, for, for use uh, in, in, in the field. The irrigation dam has transformed and improved livelihoods of residents in the area. 
and the dam is not for a year or two. Uh, it's going to be with us, I think, for the rest of our lives going forward. So we will continue to benefit from it. I think what is important, we would want to emphasize, is that uh, we are very happy about its coming to our area because it is really a game changer in our farming activities uh, in this area because we are going to be doing our agricultural activities uh, 12 months a year or all year round. And so uh, the benefit there obviously is huge. Uh, the fact that we are going to be able to do our agricultural activities throughout the year is one advantage and one benefit that we're going to get. But also it is going to improve our agricultural produce production so that uh, at all times in the year we are able to grow and sell something and thereby uh, enabling us to afford a number of things that in the past we would not afford. And so all that is a benefit uh, for the community of Mombosh. As Mombosh community have uh, been given, courtesy of government, we were given three tractors. Um, so we are owners, proud owners uh, of three uh, tractors and all implements required uh, there. But also we have uh, our working partners uh, here who are the Zambia Correctional Service who have other tra tractors and machinery even bigger than ours and because we are working with them we are able to borrow and use some of their equipment uh, when there is need for such equipment. Like one of the tractors you see here in the field, uh, the one running here, is for Zambia Correctional Service. Because of the facilities government has given us, we are able to go into it and, uh, and grow wheat, uh, a crop we never knew. So it really excites us that uh, we have this and that's why we are forever grateful to government. Skana Baraka is a small-scale farmer and shares some benefits of the multi-million dollar dam. Previously, before we consolidated the land, we used to have challenges in our agricultural systems. I can cite an example. Maybe you cultivate one hectare. One hectare of, uh, let's say, maize. You would find you, your yield will go up to four to five tons per hectare because it was done maybe under, maybe by not knowing the systems, the ways and means of how to cultivate. But uh, not really that. But uh, the system which we were using, since this is a village setup, we were using old methods of agriculture, <coughs> for lack of a better term. Indeed, through the developmental projects implemented in Central Province, it is evident that the Zambian government has brought about positive change, enhancing infrastructure, education, economic empowerment, and sustainable development throughout the province. Central Province stands as a testament to the power of the visionary governance and the determination to transform lives. The province continues to thrive, its people embracing a brighter future, united in the pursuit of progress. <laughs>